we will talk about the joints. <coughs> joints are the locations where two or more bones unite or meet. So, at the joints of the skeleton, the bones meet or unite. <clears throat> First, we will see uh, the classification of the joints. We can classify the joints of our body based on two things functional classification based on the functions and structural classification based on the structures connect the bones together so first we will see how we classify the joints of our body then we will talk about the most common type joints that is the synovial joint. Synovial joints are the most common type joints of our body. So we will talk about the synovial joints, the properties of the synovial joints. Then we will talk about different types of movements occur at the joints. Uh, then we will see the structure, inside the structure of couple of large synovial joints of the body. First, the classification of the joints. As I have already mentioned, we classify the joints based on the functions, that is the functional classification and based on the structures connect the bones together that is the structural classification okay. so functional classification and structural classification based on the functions we divide the joints into three types Sinner process, amphier process, and dire process. Based on the amount of movement, you know, movement is the function of the joints. So, how much movement occurs? Sinner process. Are the joints where no movement occurs. So, immovable joints are synarthrosis. Example, you know the sutures articulate the cranial bones and no movement occurs in the sutures, right? So, that's the example of a synarthrosis. Atrial process are the joints where small amount of movement occurs. So, small amount of movement. Example, ribs. You know when you breathe, the ribs move this way, forward and backward, right? Slight, slightly. So, Slight movement or a small amount of movement occurs in amphiar process. Example, ribs are attached to the vertebrae. When the ribs move slightly, small amount of movement occurs here. Okay. Diathrosis. Diathrosis are the joints where plenty of movement, a lot of movement 
occurs. For example, your shoulder joint, right? Lot of movement. Your elbow joint, your knee joint. In those joints, plenty of movement or a lot of movement occurs. So those are tire trusses. <coughs> so these are three types based on the amount of movement. No movement, small amount of movement, lot of movement. Make sense? That's this one? Sutures. So, remember S A D, sad. Okay. <coughs> the structure of classification. We divide the joints into three types based on the structures in the joints. One is fibrous. Another is cartilaginous, and another is called synovial. Okay. So, based on the structures in the joint, we divide into fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial. From their names you can tell in fibrous joints the structures that hold the bones together are fibrous structures okay that's why those are called fibrous in cartilaginous joints the bones are held together attached together by cartilages make sense that's why those are called cartilaginous joints in synovial there is a gap or a space between the bones. So, there is a cavity called the synovial cavity. So, the bones are not really attached to each other directly, but there is a space or cavity called the synovial cavity. And that's why the synovial joints can move a lot because there is a space between the bones. Make sense? You can easily move. Okay. So, now, the fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial they have subtypes or subdivisions. There are three types of fibrous and two types of cartilaginous. Three types of fibrous are so let me first write fibrous, three types. Sutures, syndesmosis, and gomphosis. Okay, so those are three types of fibers. Let's see. Here you see fibers, cartilaginous, synovial. Then fibers, there are three types. Cartilaginous, there are two types. So let's first see three types of fibers: sutures, syndesmosis, and gomphosis. Those are three types of fibers. Cartilaginous, there are two types. One is called syncondrosis, another is symphysis. Sorry, I'm going all the way down. So, see, two types of cartilaginous, synchondrosis and symphysis. So, first we'll see three types of fibers, then two types of cartilaginous. Sutures. Or sutural joints, we already know in the skull we have sutures. Right? In sutures, if you see under the microscope, if you see a suture under the microscope, what you will see that bones, for example, the cranial bones, this is one cranial bone, this is another cranial bone, 
the bonds get attached to each other by forming interlocking like this this is is of one bone this is the is of another bone they form attachment like this make sense interlock and in between the bones you have very short fibers so that's why this is one type of fibrous joint you have short fibers connecting the box so that is the suture suture okay, or sutural joint immovable you cannot move the bones at sutures no movement syndesmosis in syndesmosis the bones are connected by band of fibers that is called ligament so this is one bone this is another bone they are attached by a band of fibers that is called a ligament okay again fibers but these fibers are longer make sense than sutures so example distal tibio fibular joint you know uh, your tibia and fibula this is tibia this is fibula the lower ends you have a ligament here in your distal tibio fibular joint so this joint is a syndesmosis type joint gomphosis gomphosis <coughs> is the joint between the tooth and the bony sockets in your maxilla and mandible you know that teeth are attached to the jaw bones right maxilla and mandible and you have sockets in those bones and the tooth fits in it that joint is the gomphosis so the tooth is attached to the bony socket of maxilla and mandible by a ligament that is called periodontal ligament so you see in this picture this is the tooth root of the tooth and this is the bony socket and this is the ligament that is holding the tooth and bony socket bone together that is the periodontal ligament this one. so that is gomphosis in the left side you see lower end of tibia and fibula are connected by that ligament so that is the syndesmosis now two types of cartilaginous synchondrosis and symphysis so synchondrosis joints are those cartilaginous joints where the bones are attached to each other by hyaline type cartilage so very simple if the hyaline cartilage connects the bones together that is called synchondrosis make sense a type of cartilage hyaline if the bones are attached by fibrous cartilage that is called symphysis so the difference is what type of both are cartilaginous but what type of cartilage is there if hyaline that is synchondrosis if fibro that is symphysis clear okay so now you see this is the first rib and this is the manubrium of the sternum they are connected by hyaline cartilage so this is what synchondrosis make sense here you see the hip bones are attached to each other at pubic symphysis by this piece of cartilage this is a fibro cartilage so this joint is what symphysis make sense because this is fibro cartilage these are fibro cartilages the vertebrae are attached to each other by fibro cartilage so these are also symphysis so these are symphysis this is also 
suffices because these are all fibro cartilages. So here you see uh, intravertebral discs, fibrocartilage, and pubic symphysis, this cartilage, fibrocartilage. So these are symphysis. Properties of a synovial joint. Synovial joints are the most common type of joints in the body. Not only that, synovial joints are most freely movable joints. Plenty of movement can occur in the synovial joints. Most common and most movable. Now, if you see the structure of a synovial joint, you should be able to see same structures in all synovial joints. You will see the bones, two bones join. So these are the ends of the bones. In between the bones there is a gap or a space that is called synovial cavity. So in synovial joint there is a cavity or a space that is called the synovial cavity. In that cavity, there is a fluid that is called synovial fluid. <coughs> the ends of the bones that form the joint are covered by hyaline cartilage. So, hyaline cartilage covers the ends of the bones. These hyaline cartilages are called articular cartilages. Joint, articular means joint. So, articular cartilage covers the bones end of the bones. Another structure that does what? Wraps the joint around. It's a membranous structure like this. Wraps the joint okay, around. And that is called the capsule. So if this is the joint, here is the joint. The capsule covers the whole joint around. So the capsule has two layers, outer and inner layer. So this is the articular capsule, articular or joint capsule, same thing, capsule or joint capsule, it has two layers. Outer layer is very tough, fibrous, that is called the fibrous capsule. It makes sense because the fibrous structure is, remember I said if the structure has a lot of fibers, that is tough, right? So, outer layer is fibrous capsule and it protects the joints because it is tough. So, outer is the fibrous capsule or fibrous layer and inner one is called synovial membrane. This one is soft. Synovial membrane is the inner one. And what's the function of this inner one? Outer one is tough and that protects the joint. Inner one secretes the synovial fluid. So, the secretion of synovial fluid is the function of the inner membrane of the joint capsule and that's why that membrane is called the synovial membrane it secretes the fluid synovial fluid so that is the structure of a typical synovial 
join. If I ask it in the test, uh, draw and identify the structures of a synovial joint or write the properties, name the properties of a synovial joint, you will write this. Then you draw this. Here you see uh, the same thing that I have shown you on the board. Uh, two ends of the bones are covered by hyaline cartilage called the articular cartilage. There is a gap, synovial cavity filled with fluid, lubricating fluid that reduces the friction, chance of friction. So that's the synovial fluid. That capsule has two layers, outer fibers and inner synovial membrane. In some large synovial joints, we see bursa. Bursa are not present in all synovial joints. So, only in large synovial joints. What are the bursa? Bursa are fluid filled Latin membranous sacs. Fluid filled, that means filled with fluid. Flat, flattened, membranous sac. So flattened membranous sac filled with fluid. That fluid is also synovial fluid. Synovial fluid. This is the membrane and the shape of that sac is kind of flat. So that is the bursa. Now, what's the function of a bursa? Bursa can roll in between the structures and prevents the friction in between the structures in the joints. For example, you have acromion here of the scapula and this is the head of the humerus, right? You know that? This is acromion, head of the humerus. You have a bursa here that is called sub-acromial bursa. Sub means what? Under, right? So under the acromion, you have sub-acromial bursa here. And this bursa is like a ball bearing. It can roll. So when you move your shoulder, okay? move the head of the humerus, it rolls like this and reduces the friction. Like if I put a couple of wheels under your shoe, right, then you can easily go fast and smooth, right. So, bursa rolls and reduces the friction, increases the movement, okay, amount of movement. Okay, now, um, also we have ligaments, tendons around the joint. We know that. Um, and when we move the joint, uh, there is a good chance of friction between the ligaments, tendons, bones and cartilages. So, bursa prevent the friction between the structures uh, in the joints. Uh, Sometimes, inflammation of bursa occurs, right? That is called bursitis. Itis is inflammation. Any inflammation is itis, right? You know, meningitis, conjunctivitis, rhinitis, pharyngitis, laryngitis, tonsillitis, all itis, hepatitis, nephritis. Itis is the inflammation of that particular organ, right? So, bursitis is the inflammation of the bursa. Now, when inflammation occurs, swelling of the bursa occurs, right? Uh, and when you move the joint, it will be painful because they will not roll easily, make sense, because of the inflammation. So, that is bursitis. Sometimes, bursa can rupture, because membrane are sac, so rupture and fluid can come out. So, uh, if something hits, for example, if something hits here, right, it will crush and rupture the bursa, right, fluid will come out. So, the person will not be able to move easily. It will be very painful, right? Uh, and restricted movement. So, uh, that can happen too. Here, you see uh, the bursa, which is in between 
the bone and the ligament. So above the marsar, coracoacromial uh, ligament. You know that this is the coracoid process. This is the acromion. So this ligament is here, coracoacromial, and marsa is here. So reducing the friction between this ligament and the bone. So that's the function of a marsa. Now we'll talk about the movement. We know that the main function of a joint is movement. Joints allow the bones to move, right? The joints are structured in a way, designed in a way that you can move the bones at the joints. Make sense? That's how the joints are designed. Now, you see here, uh, this joint is designed in a way that the trochlea fits inside the uh, no, trochlear notch and you can move like this. Right? So all joints are designed for particular types of movements. Now <coughs> another function of joints is holding the bones together, not only movement, holding the bones together because we know that around the joints and also inside the joints we have ligaments and tendons. So, holding the bones together is another function. Movement and holding the bones together. Now, uh, bones move at the joints with the help of what? Muscles, right? Without muscles, you won't be able to move the bones at the joints. We know that bones move at the joints, but with the help of the muscles. So, each muscle has an origin and insertion. Which end is the origin and which end is the insertion? This is your arm, humerus, and forearm. Now, this is a muscle. Okay. One end is attached to the arm bone. Another end is attached to the forearm bone. So this muscle is like this. Okay, this is one end. This is another end. Now, when I move my forearm, flexion of the forearm, you see, this bone is staying there, but these bones are moving right towards this. So the end of the muscle attached to the fixed bone, that is the origin and the end is attached to the bone that is moving, that is what? Insertion. Make sense? So now I can say that insertion moves towards the origin because the origin is fixed, right? Staying there. So the end is attached to the fixed bone, that is the origin. The end is attached to the bones or bone that is moving, that's the insertion. So insertion moves towards the origin. Now, the movement occurs in three planes. You already know the planes or sections. We have talked about that in the lab. This plane is what? Sagittal. So this is, if I move my head, you see, this way. Right? That is sagittal plane movement. Make sense? Now this plane is frontal or coronal. So if I move my head this way, that is frontal or coronal. Make sense? Because I am moving this way. Now another is this transverse, right? Or horizontal plane. So if I move my head, make sense? So this is transverse plane movement. So sagittal, right? frontal and transverse. Make sense? I can show you the upper part of my body. If I move my upper part of the body this way, that is what? Sagittal. If I move my body this way, coronal or frontal, right? And if I rotate like this, transverse. Make sense? 
So those are three planes of movement. Sometimes we combine two or more to make more complex movement, but those are the basic planes. Different types of movements occur in the synovial joints. <coughs> One type of movement is called gliding movement. If the surfaces of the bones are flat, so you see, this is one flat surface, this is another bone, flat surface. Now, if they form joint, what kind of movement occurs there? Sliding. Make sense? They will slide over each other like this. Make sense? So that is called the gliding movement small amount of movement like this two flat surfaces so in which bones gliding type movement occurs in between the carpal bones you know that carpal bones are short cubical shaped bones right and this is one cubical shaped bone this is another cubical shaped bone in between this kind of movement occurs okay that's the gliding angular movements in angular movements, the size of the angle changes. The size of the angle between the bones changes. Let me give you the examples. So you see, this is the elbow joint, right? This is the elbow joint. Now, this angle is what? 180 degree, right? 180 degree. Now, if I move my forearm towards the arm, this angle gets what, bigger or smaller? Smaller, right? So this is called flexion. In flexion, the angle, the size of the angle gets smaller and the bones move towards each other. Opposite of flexion is called the extension. So this is again, I'm going back. So this is the extension. The size of the angle is increasing, right? Extension. So this is what? Flexion of the forearm because this one is moving, right? This is the extension of the forearm. Make sense? Now, see this angle here. This angle. When I move my thigh up, this angle gets what? Smaller, right? So this is the flexion of the thigh. Is it clear? And getting bigger extension. Make sense? Now again, another example, see here, I am moving my head forward. So this angle is getting what? Smaller, right? So this is flexion of what? Flexion of? I am moving what? I am moving what? Head. Cool. Moving the head, right? So, this is this angle is getting smaller so this is the flexion of the head make sense now this is what extension going back now in some joints we can go beyond the extension so this is extension right now if i move like this that is beyond the extension that is called hyper extension make sense in some joints we cannot do hyper extension for example elbow again this is what flexion right this is extension. Can I go further more? No, I cannot. We will stop here. So, in this one, only flexion and extension. But here, I can do flexion, extension, and hyperextension. Make sense? Okay. Abduction, adduction. Angle changes, but sideways. If I move my arm away from my trunk, you see this angle is getting bigger, right? but which way? Sideway, lateral. So this is called abduction and bringing back towards the trunk, adduction. Abduction of the arm, adduction of the arm. Now see, abduction of thigh, adduction of thigh. Okay. <coughs> circumduction. Circumduction is circular movement. If I draw a circle, on the board. When I draw a circle on the board, the movement occurs in my shoulder, 
joint that is circumduction. It could be a small circle or a big circle. Both are circumduction. Make sense? I can use my foot to draw a circle. So that is also circumduction of the hip joint. Make sense? Yeah. Uh, you know, in some sports, uh, have you heard cricket? In baseball, we throw the ball like this, right? But in cricket, you cannot do that. You have to make full circle. You have to make a circle. So that is called circumduction. Okay? Circle. Now, another movement that is called rotation. The difference between circumduction and rotation is in rotation, the bone moves without changing the axis. Now you see, this is the bone and this is the axis. So bone, you see, axis is staying there. Make sense? Bone is moving. That is called rotation. Is it clear? Axis is staying here. Bone is moving around the axis. Make sense? So that is what? Rotation. Now if the axis moves like this, what is that? Circumduction. Make sense? So in circumduction, the axis changes like this. Circle. In rotation, the axis stays there. So what's the for rotation? Yeah, my head. If I put something through my head, only movement is possible without moving this is around that. That is rotation. Make sense? Now what is this? Circumduction. See, this is circle, right? Circumduction, rotation, the axis is straight there. Circumduction is this, rotation is this. Okay, so uh, two different things. <coughs> now, medial and lateral rotation. See my head. I am moving towards the side. That is lateral rotation, and this is medial rotation. Make sense? This is lateral rotation. This is medial rotation. So. Those are rotations. Special movements occur in some synovial joints. For example, in your elbow here, supination pronation in the forearm. This position is called what? Supine. Your palm is up, supine. When we lie down on the bed like this, supine, right? So this is supine position. Now when I move from this to this, palm is downwards, that is called pronation. Where we are ending, that is the movement, okay? Now you see again, from this I am going to that. So where I am ending? Supine. So this movement is called supination. Pronation, supination, okay? When your forearm is in supine position, what happens? Your radius and ulna are side by side. This is radius. This is ulna. Make sense? Now, when I do pronation, you see this end of radius goes to the other side. That means first, this is radius. This is ulna. Going up like this to the other side. So, crosses over the ulna. The radius crosses over the ulna in pronation. So, this is pronation. Radius goes over the arm. <coughs> Dorsiflexion, plantar flexion occurs in the foot. Now, before you know that, you need to know the dorsal and plantar surfaces. This surface is called what? The sole is called what? Plantar. Plantar, plantar right? And the top is dorsal. So, if I move my foot upwards, that is dorsiflexion, make sense? Downwards, plantar flexion. So that happens in the foot. Now in the foot, another movement, you see if this is your foot, this is big toe, if I move the big toe up, the sole moves towards you, right? Move the big toe upwards. So that is called inversion. Now if I move it down, inversion. So this is what? Toe is up, right? Toe is 
up. So this is inversion. Now if I do this, twist down, inversion. Okay. So inversion inwards, inversion outwards. Protection, retraction. This is very simple one. Have you seen protruded mandible? Sometimes you see the mandible is pushed forward, right? It's a protruded mandible. So protection if the bone is pushed forward, okay? For example, mandible. If I move the mandible forward, that is protection. If I pull it back, that is what? Retraction. retraction. We also use retraction in other uh, terms. For example, we can say we retracted the soldiers from the battlefield, right? We have retracted, pulled them back. So, protection, retraction. Pushing outwards, moving backwards. Elevation, depression. Very simple. If I open my mouth, mandible moves down, right? So, that is what? Depression. Moving up is elevation. So, when we close the mouth, elevation of mandible, open the mouth, depression. <coughs> So those are different types of movements in different synovial joints in the body. You can see those pictures uh, and uh, you will understand what kind of movement is that. Large synovial joints in your body are knee joint, shoulder joint, hip joint, elbow joint. Those are big synovial joints. Lot of movement occurs in those joints. We will just see the structure of couple of large synovial joints to understand uh, what kind of structures are found in and around those synovial joints. Knee joint is the largest and most complex synovial joint of the body. <coughs> Why it is called the most complex? Because inside the knee joint you have three joints. Three joints together is called the knee joint. What are those three joints? You know the lower end of Femur has two condyles. Do you remember that? Two condyles. Those two condyles articulate with the two condyles of the upper end of tibia. So these two condyles join with these two condyles of tibia. So those are two joints, separate joints. Lateral condyles join together, medial condyles join together. So lateral and medial tibio femoral joints. Make sense? tibia and femur, tibio femoral joint. And another joint is here, the patella, kneecap joints, this is the patellar surface, I showed you it last class, very smooth, right? Patellar surface, so patella and femur, that's the patellofemoral joint. So two tibio femoral and one patellofemoral. Those three joints, uh, sorry, femoral patella, the other way, femoral patella, between femur and patella. So those are three joints together of the knee joint. This is the structure of a knee joint. First we will see bursa. This is a large synovial joint, so it has a couple of bursa. Those green structures are bursa. Fluid field, flattened membrane or sex. <coughs> Very easy, those names. The one above the patella, that is called suprapatellar bursa. Make sense? Supra means above. So, suprapatellar bursa. That one is separating the quadriceps tendon. You see, this is the quadriceps tendon and the bone. So, this is the suprapatellar bursa. Very important because separating the tendon and bone, reducing the friction between those two. Lot of movement occurs, right? Every time you walk, 
movement occurs there in between <coughs> the uh, tendon and the bone. Another bursa that is below the patella that is called infrapatellar bursa. Deep infrapatellar bursa. This one makes sense because this is below the patella. Supra-patellar, deep infrapatellar. This is a very important bursa. Why? Because you see this is the patellar ligament. We use that for knee jack testing, right? The patellar ligament. And under the patellar ligament, you have that bursa. So it reduces the friction, helps in movement. Another bursa is just under the skin, in front of the patella. That's why it is called subcutaneous prepatellar bursa. Subcutaneous means under the skin. You all know that, right? So subcutaneous is under the skin. Prepatellar, because if I go this way, before I hit the patella, I will get it under the skin. So, P means before. Subcutaneous, prepatellar, bursa. So, those are three bursa. Remember those. Very simple name. Inside the knee joint, since it is a synovial joint, the bones are covered by hyaline cartilage called the articular cartilage. So, these blue structures are Articular cartilage covering articular cartilages covering the box. Inside the joint also you have cruciate ligaments. There are two anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments. They are like crossing like this. Now, uh, how you know which one is anterior, which one is posterior? The easy way is you will see the lower end. This is the front, this is the back of the joint. So, if you see the lower end is in the front, that's the anterior. This is the posterior cruciate ligament. Okay? So, uh, since they cross like that. You have synovial cavity because this is a large synovial joint. This is the cavity between the bones filled with synovial fluid. You have meniscus. Meniscus, there are two meniscuses. Those are fibrocartilaginous. Articular cartilage is hyaline cartilage, but meniscuses are fibrocartilaginous structure. Fibrocartilage. Very tough. Since fibro, lot of fibers, and you know that if some structure has a lot of fibers, that is tough, right? So, fibrocartilaginous meniscuses are very tough, but still, sometimes, turning of meniscus occurs. Have you heard that? Turning of meniscus occurs, although they are tough. Also, turning of cruciate ligament. We hear that often, so that can happen. This is the articular capsule or joint capsule must be there that wraps the joint around. I mentioned you uh, before. <coughs> Another two structures about the patella. This is the tendon of quadriceps femoris. And below the patella, that's the patellar ligament. Same structure, but above the patella, it is a tendon. Below the patella, it is a ligament. Why? If the structure connects the muscle to the bone, that is called a tendon. If bone to bone, that is called what? A ligament. Okay. So, although the structure is okay, here you see the structures around the knee joint. These structures. Hold the bones together very strongly. Support the bones to stay or hold them together <coughs> around the knee joint. First, you already know about the patella. You have the quadriceps tendon or tendon of quadriceps femoris. 
that one connects the quadriceps muscles to the patella and below the patella you have the patellar ligament now in both sides of patella you have retina cula lateral patellar retina cula and medial patellar retina cula what is a retina cula retina cula is a tendon but flat tendons are rope like right kind of round but if it is flat like a sheet that's a retina cula so that's the difference okay the structurally they are say fibers connective tissue fibers but if it is flat like this that is what retina cula if it is round like a rope that is tendon makes sense and beside the retina cula in both sides you have uh, uh, laterally lateral to the retina cula you have collateral ligament in the tibial side you have tibial collateral ligament very simple because this is tibia this one is attached to the tibia this is the lateral one fibula so fibular collateral ligament we know that tibia is medially fibula is lateral okay. so this is medial retina cula lateral retina cula tibial collateral attached to tibia fibular collateral attached to so those are around the joint protecting the joint as well as supporting the joint holding the bone here you see how the articular hyaline cartilage and meniscus fibrocartilage are in the joint you are looking the upper surface of the tibia from the top upper surface of the tibia so you have both articular cartilage and meniscus articular cartilage is inside and around the articular cartilage this is the meniscus this is highly this is fibrous cartilage <coughs> fibrous cartilage is much tougher turning here you see uh, the turning of meniscus turning of collateral ligament and turning of cruciate ligament usually how to see if something hits from one side like hitting from this side the bones move like this right because the pressure is coming from this side hitting this side right the bones move like this and the pressure is created in the other side right so that turning occurs usually in the other side it depends if something is hitting um, which is sharp of course the cut will be in the same side but if it's the pressure if i push like this okay then what will happen pressure will occur more in the other side so turning happens in the other side but of course it depends on what type of pressure is there shoulder joint shoulder joint is a synovial joint but what kind of synovial ball and socket type synovial joint why it is called a ball and socket because you see this is the shoulder joint the head of the humerus is a ball right round spherical and this is a socket glenoid cavity is it deep or shallow shallow right so that is ball and socket type synovial your hip joint is also ball and socket because the head of the femur is nice round ball right acetabulum is a socket now in shoulder joint you have few ligaments those ligaments hold the bones together because you said that the glenoid cavity is shallow right so the head can easily come out so those ligaments are really very important helpful 
So what are the ligaments around the shoulder joint? We have coracohumeral, coracoacromial, and glenohumeral. Those names are very simple. If you know the name of the bone parts, it's very simple. You see, first one, coracohumeral. You know that this is the coracoid process, right? And this is the humerus, right? So coracohumeral, the ligament goes like this. How about coracoacromial? This is coracoid, this is acromion, right? So coracoacromial ligament. Glenohumeral, there are three. You know this is the glenoid cavity, right? So glenohumeral attached to the side of the glenoid cavity and goes to the humerus. So from the side of the glenoid cavity to the humerus, there are three, like this. So three gleno humeral ligaments. Also, you have two important fossa, flattened sacs filled with synovial flick. One is called subacromial bursa. I showed you uh, under the acromion. This is the acromion. So subacromial bursa. That is a very important one. Another is subscapular bursa. Here, under the scapula. Here, subscapular bursa. So subacromion and sub scapular bursa. Those are two important bursa you see there, the green structures. <coughs> and you see those ligaments here, acromion and coracoid. So this is coracoacromion. Coracoid to the humerus. So coracohumeral. And three leno humeral. You remember there is a sulcus here, group that is called intertubercular sulcus because between the tubercles, intertubercular sulcus. The tendon of, I mentioned that in last class, tendon of biceps brachii muscle passes through that. So you can see the tendon of long head of biceps brachii. That's why you have that groove or sulcus there. So that's uh, the shoulder joint. So you need to know the structures in and around the knee joint, right? In and around the shoulder joint. You need to know the bursa, tendons, ligaments, okay? Uh, those structures. A uh, couple of clinical conditions related to the joint. One is called bursitis, inflammation of the bursa. Inflammation of the bursa. Another is called rheumatoid arthritis. Have you heard this? Very commonly heard, right? Rheumatoid, rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis. Yes. So rheumatoid arthritis is the inflammation. Itis is inflammation of soft tissue structures of the joints, not the bone. Bone is hard tissue, right? So in the joint, you have soft tissue like capsule or you know. Uh, uh, the ligaments, tendons, those soft tissue structures, if they are, uh, they get inflammation, that's the rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, osteoporosis. Pores. Many holes of pores in the bone. So the bones get fragile, easily 
fracture will occur in the bone if osteoporosis occurs. So those are uh, some clinical conditions, bursitis, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoporosis. Remember those. I'll take your attendance then. Uh